What's up, everyone? Welcome to the podcast, Finally, a reason to use my psych degree. With your favorite college graduate, Caitlin, with this week's episode, Debunked, the Stanford Prison Experiment. If you've ever taken a psychology course, I promise you've heard of the Stanford Prison Experiment. It's one of the most famous and fascinating psychology studies of all time and uses a temptingly simple story about human nature, or so we thought. The infamous study was conducted at Stanford University in August of 1971. The study was supposed to be a two-week simulation of a prison environment with guards and prisoners. It was led by lead psychologist Felix Zimbarbo. Zimbarbo wanted to focus on power rules, group identity, and situational variables. In this case, to see the psychological effects of being in prison or being a prison guard. So how the study goes, an ad was placed in the paper and 24 participants were selected and split into a prisoner and guard role. Although shortly after the experiment started, some weird things started to happen. The guards began mistreating the prisoners and the prisoners reacted to it seeming to take this assignment way too literal. And with the increase of guard brutality, the study ended on day six, allowing Zimbarbo and his crew to conclude that innocent people thrown into a situation where one group has power over other will abuse it, and the people left powerless will be driven into submission and even madness through the theories of cognitive dissonance and power of authority. Now, many of us know the story. We watched it on Netflix, or we learned about it in class. Me personally, I loved this study and I found it so interesting, teaching us about ethics in society and social roles and situations. And I only graduated a few years ago. So that's why I find it so interesting that astounding evidence has only been released a few years ago that debunks their entire findings. And nobody ever brought it up. So let's talk through it. What happened? The first argument is that the guards were trained The guards were told to toughen up and treat the prisoners more aggressively. Zimbarbo went out of his way to create tension and manipulate the guards into being cruel. David Jaffe, one of Zimbarbo's students and then was created the warden of the jail, was found to chastise the guards for not being severe enough. And it was a found that majority of the guards, two thirds in fact, did not abuse their power in any way. It was only four in total that abused their power in any given way during the experiment. One guard, David, was actually a drama major and said he took steps to create this bad guard persona because it's what he thought Zimbarbo wanted. Now, David was known as John Wayne in the jail, given the nickname by the prisoners because of his Southern accent and the cruelty he committed. Although David came out saying multiple times, the accent was fake, saying, quote, I took it like an improv class. I believe that I was doing what the researchers wanted me to do, and I thought I'd do it better than anybody else. He also came out multiple times saying he regretted everything that happened, saying he took it way over the top. But Zimbarbo seemed pleased with him and even thanked him and congratulated him on his good work as he left the experiment on the last day. And it wasn't just the guards. The prisoners were also conditioned by the experiment. Two prisoners, Rich and Doug, tried to quit the experiment as early as the second day but were told no. Doug even tried to fake a stomach pain and it didn't work. Zimbarbo told the prisoners that it had to be a severe medical issue or psychiatric help to be able to leave the experiment at any given time. So Doug thought of an idea leading to that infamous scene we all know where he starts screaming while he's in the hole. Zimbarbo even went into the staff lounge later that day and said to them, wow, I can't believe I did it. I actually made them believe they're not able to leave. David even came out later in an interview proving that his psychological breakdown was all a lie. He knew the only way he would be able to leave the experiment, a severe medical issue or a psychiatric break. He chose the psychiatric break. Then even quoting later, anybody who is a clinician would have known I was faking. If you listen to the tape, it's not subtle. I'm not that good at acting. I mean, I think I do a fairly good job, but I'm more hysterical than psychotic. The next argument is that the participants responded to demanded characteristics. So let's go back to the beginning of the experiment. The ad placed in the paper. The ad stated that they were looking for participants to experience a prison environment. At first, you don't think this really means anything. However, a recreation study proved otherwise. 
showed that using those two words led to volunteers coming forward that may have had more authoritarian and narcissistic traits compared to an ad where those two words weren't put in at all, which leads to the overarching problem with this study, Zimbarbo's bias. He's always been open with his stand on prisons, saying prisons are a waste of time, money, and lives. Yes, I'm a social activist, and prison reform is always in my mind, which he's always denied the experiment has political motive, but I'm not so sure. It even spills into the next problem. The experiment was inaccurately reported. Only about 15 hours of video footage was released to the public, which shows us those notorious scenes we all know from the movies. However, the experiment lasted six whole days which is leaving out 85% of the hours recorded. So where are they and why weren't they released? It's theorized that these were never released because it proves his theory wrong, that a majority of the time, nothing happened. The guards and the prisoners were getting along and it was nothing hit-worthy. The next issue I have with this study is what happened after. You would think a psychologist would want his studies replicated, therefore proving that he was right, but Zimbarbo didn't want that to happen. Two researchers actually tried to completely replicate this study, in which the guards received no coaching and the prisoners were allowed to leave at any time. And their study failed to show Zimbarbo's results. And according to one of the researchers, Zimbarbo didn't take it well when he heard that they were trying to get their journal published in the British Journal of Social Psychology, saying, quote, we discovered that he was privately writing to editors to try to stop us getting published by claiming that we were fraudulent. Now, to me, the evidence is astounding. And the more research I did, the more I was upset about it. This was one of those studies that we learned in foundations. It was the core of my psychology degree, which almost feels like I'm learning that Santa Claus isn't real all over again. Unless you're my dad. In that case, you didn't hear any of this. Thanks for listening to my podcast, Finally, A Reason to Use My Psych Degree. Stay tuned next week to see if I can find another.